So tell us who you are and where you've been today and what you've been doing. Hi, um, I am Erica Najad and I work for the USGS and we've just been on a uh, South San Francisco Bay cruise um, where we measured a variety of different water quality parameters and this is uh, a cruise that we do uh, monthly or a couple times a month, um, every month throughout the year. Um, I've been doing this job for about six years now um, and this project has been going on for about 50 years before that. Uh, so I am the newest piece, uh, newest one of the newer scientists on that project that's been going on. And what's most challenging about your job? Um, most challenging? That's tough because I really love my job. I guess, you know, there's a level of uncertainty. Um, I'm on a term position that is refilled every year. Mm -hmm. And if the funding is not there for my position, I don't have a job. Mm -hmm. Um, so that level of uncertainty is, is the most uh -huh. challenging part. Is this your dream job? This is my dream job. <laughs> I, I um, When I was a kid, I wanted to be a marine biologist before I kind of knew what that was. And then I, I went to school for biology and then refined that in a master's program looking at phytoplankton and nutrient dynamics um, in a bay estuarine system and, and found this job. It was a perfect fit for me and I, I really love this job. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great job. So tell us about estuaries. What's what do you what's really going on under the surface that we can't see? Yeah. So estuaries are really interesting places because uh, you have a lot of um, complicated dynamics. So you have the ocean coming in, that saltwater source. You have the river water coming in um, and freshwater. So you get this place where you know the land meets the sea, and you have the dynamics of mixing of water sources. You have the dynamics that. A lot of people live on the estuary, so there's this urban development, there's a lot of input from wastewater and humans, and uh, there's recreation, there's fishing, fishing, and um, a just a lot of different dynamics coming together to make a really interesting uh, place to study and work. On water quality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so all of those things affect water quality and what uh -huh. we measure. Uh -huh. So how has it been working with Jim Clern? Uh, working with Jim Clern has been a kind of a dream come true for me. I, I read all of his papers when I was in grad school and I just think he does really interesting work. Um, Jim always has a million questions in his mind and, and new things he wants to study. Um, he's a very um, he's a very thoughtful and intelligent person and it's mm -hmm. been really great to work with him. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get scared out there on the water? Yeah. No, and I, I think the only reason is because we have a, uh, I've been working with Joel and we have a really capable captain and I know that he would never put us in a situation that was unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always felt really safe in his hands. Um, we, there's a balance of, of anything it takes to get the science done, but uh, uh -huh. it draws the line of where we would be in harm's way. And why do we need to sample from a boat? Um, so we sample the, the channel of the bay, which is, um, you know, interesting. You can't you can't get there from the shore. So without sampling from the boat, we wouldn't get that um, that channel line. And we, because we've been going to the same stations uh, for all this time, it's it's important and interesting that we can continue to have those same station locations that we sample year after year, so we can um, have this long-term data set to compare. Um, so when we were just having the drought recently, uh, we could say, okay, well, what did it look like the last time we had a drought? And we can compare those years and how, have, how has the bay changed since the last time there was these similar conditions. Um, so you, don't, you can get not just seasonality, but you can compare different years, different climatic events. Um, so it's, uh, it makes for an interesting time series. Tell me again about what you were saying about um, how you trained into Charlie's job was oh it? yeah so and the consistency right so I worked with um, Charles Martin for about five years before he went off to get his PhD and uh, we hired Emily who had just finished a master's program and was really eager to to find a job and continue in um, marine wa water quality work and so uh, we actually hired Emily before Charlie left so that we had overlap in their positions and so we could have this consistency. We can make sure that if Charlie does a sample and Emily does a sample, they're going to get the same result for the same water sample, um, which is really important. And uh, I think you lose that consistency if you 
have a university project that's funded for a couple years and then maybe five years down the line someone else comes and picks it up um, we make sure that we have consistency throughout this project which is important when it's been going on for so long uh, and so the we can be confident is important because a data point can be so different if somebody does it wrong or? oh yeah absolutely so it can be really different if someone is not trained properly to uh, collect the sample uh, filter the sample analyze the sample back in the lab if you don't have that consistency um, you could falsely label a trend or you could think something is going on when it's not really going on and if you don't have that confidence in the data you can't compare something that's happening now to something that happened 30 years ago but because we know that um, technique has been so well trained uh, we can have confidence in comparing data points throughout the years. Some of the data we collect uh, we collect for UC Santa Cruz or Stanford or different collaborators and so um, some of that is just downloaded and a data file is sent to a different scientist to work on. Um, other data we take back to the lab and analyze ourselves, like the chlorophyll and the uh, SPM or turbidity data. Um, and then the nutrients we send off to the National Water Quality Lab, uh, which is a USGS laboratory, and they send us that data back. Um, the CTD data is then downloaded and you know filtered for uh, edits of you know a bad data point or anything like that, and then it's regressed against the uh, discrete data that Emily was collecting. So we make a relationship with those two sets of data, and um, once we're really confident that we're representing that data correctly, um, we uh, share that with our whole group. So. Emily looks at it, Jim looks at it, Tara looks at it. We all make sure that we all agree that this is the best possible data quality we could get. And then we publish that online for anyone to use.